Hello there. In some circles, it seems to be almost axiomatic that Victorian Britain was rife with racial prejudice, which prevented the small number of black and Asian people living in the country at that time from getting on, you know, achieving their full potential. This is an interesting, although I have to say somewhat dubious perspective. The idea is that because of the systemic racism to which they were subjected, the black people and Asians were unable to advance academically, socially, uh, politically to the same extent as the majority white population in 19th century Britain. This is the widely accepted narrative. It means that when somebody like Mary Seacole uh, comes along, she should be celebrating for what she did achieve. She may not actually have been a nurse, but she was an adventurous and independent minded woman. Um, she didn't let racism hold her back and for that reason she struggled against um, racial prejudice as a woman of colour. Perhaps we should celebrate her. I think this is a pretty fair and unbiased summary of the view held by many progressive and liberal people in this country and America, both black and white who are determined that black and Asian people won't face again the sorts of prejudices and obstacles uh, that they faced in the 19th century. There's a very serious problem though with this particular point of view. Thinking now about the idea that people of colour, especially women, could not really get on in Victorian Britain, I want to show you two women. The first is called Rukmabai and the other Kadambini Ganguli. What do these two women have in common, apart from the obvious fact that they are both of Indian heritage? Well, they're both qualified as doctors, one in London and one in Edinburgh in the 1890s when Queen Victoria was on the throne. Yeah, not only women, but Indian women, and they still managed to study as medical students in Britain and qualify as doctors. It's not something that many people seem to know about. It gives us a slightly different angle on the times, um, and it's time, I think, to think a little about the nature of the prejudice in Britain at that time. Nobody would deny that prejudice existed and was widespread in Victorian Britain. Um, there was prejudice amongst the middle classes against the working classes and against uh, middle class and upper class people among the working class people themselves. There was prejudice against Jews, against Catholics, against foreigners and also against strangers in general. The British have never been overly fond of strangers. The suspicion which black and white people were sometimes treated with is probably a manifestation of this uh, mistrust and suspicion of strangers rather than um, racial prejudice itself, that is to say racism. Um, in other words, they were disliked not because they were black, but because they were an unknown quantity, because they were foreigners. Of course, the British have always been an insular nation, both in the physical sense that they live on an island, but also psychologically, they have a deep built-in mistrust and suspicion of strangers. Here's a cartoon from the time at which we are looking. The dialogue, I mean, it shows two very working class men regarding um, a well-dressed man wearing a top hat. And the dialogue read, who's in Bill? And his mate replies, stranger. To which the first man says, Eve Arthur Brick at him. It's this wariness of strangers which tended to make it hard for black and Asian people to fit into Victorian Britain um, in the 19th century, rather than any racial prejudice, rather than the idea that perhaps black or Asian people were inferior in themselves. It was more, uh, it was the same way that Jews and Irish Catholics were regarded really. They were different and that served to make them suspect in itself. Nevertheless, that suspicion could be overcome, uh, in which case skin colour became irrelevant. Let's look at this man, whose name is 
Sir Munshiji Balnagri. Yeah, that's Sir Manjaji Balnagre. He was a Conservative Member of Parliament for the London constituency of Bow for 11 years between 1895 and 1906. So he was elected in 1895, he was re-elected once and then lost his seat in 1906. He's an Indian, he was born in Bombay. Before he became an MP, he was quite a, a successful lawyer. Um, I wonder how many viewers are surprised to learn that there was an Indian MP in Victorian London at that time. Presumably they'll also be surprised to learn he wasn't the only Indian MP then. This is Dadabe Nauraji who was elected in London in 1892. Now I've read up in contemporary newspapers um, all the reports I can find of these MPs, uh, particularly Munshiji Balnagri, he did all the sorts of things that an MP did in the 1890s. He awarded prizes at sports days, he opened buildings, he made speeches. I can't find any reference at all to his ethnicity. None whatever. I can't find any record of anybody being prejudiced against him or even remarking on the fact that he was Indian. It's simply not people didn't seem to care. The fact is he was a successful lawyer. The Conservatives selected him as a candidate not because he was Indian but because he was a sharp and ambitious lawyer. The fact that he was Indian didn't seem to matter either way. There's something a bit fishy going on here. Almost every school child in Britain has heard about Mary Seacole, the Jamaican woman who could not become a nurse because of Victorian racism. But nobody seems to have heard about the Indian women who qualified as doctors in Britain at the same time during Victoria's reign, which is a very odd indeed. I mean, how many viewers actually knew about this? How many knew that in the 1890s there were Indian MPs in London? Hmm. The notion that racial prejudice in 19th century Britain made it impossible for people of colour to get on and forge professional careers in all sorts of fields is a false one. I mean what is the evidence for this racial prejudice? I'd be interested if people can put anything that they can think of in the comments, by which I mean primary sources, not things written today. In the description of this video I'm going to put the names of the doctors and MPs that we saw here so that people can check them out for themselves. So there's information about them on the internet of course.